welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So let's try this again, yo. <laughs> Today we are creating a particle uh, transition or dispersion effect in After Effects, right? Let me go ahead and show you an example of what we can create. So pretty cool. Basically created the particles coming out of my body while I disappear. Bada bing, bada boom. I did do something else with it. Let me go ahead and show you the other. All I did is duplicate the trans, uh, the composition. I reversed the second one, etc. Anyways, let's jump into After Effects and get this party started, right? Right here, I have this piece of footage of myself dancing. I used it for a previous tutorial, doing a silhouette, uh, kind of like uh, one of those Apple iPod uh, commercials from back in the day. Super cool, but mine's on steroids. Check it out, the card's on the top. Next, or first, right? Let's go ahead and click on Create a New Composition. We're going to call this Main Comp. I'm gonna set it to be 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second, and that's because my source footage is the same, right? Obviously, you'd set this to whatever you want. You'd set the duration to what you want. We're gonna set it for 15 seconds, but we can, of course, change this later. I'll select OK, drag my dancing footage into this comp, and here it is, right? Real quick, I'll show you that there is a transparent background. I shot myself in front of a green screen, and I keyed myself out. <laughs> on the particular key from today, it, it's not the best key, but it's okay, huh? Anyway, so the first thing we want to do is create a mask on the side of, uh, well, on, in my example, I use the side of my body to disperse particles, and so we need to create a mask to do so. So let's go ahead and double click on this layer, which opens it up in our viewer in the layer mode. Next, we'll select the brush tool up here on the top. We'll come over here to the paint uh, window. We'll click on this to make sure our foreground color is set to all the way white. We'll say OK. Next, in the brushes pane, we want to make sure that our diameter of our brush is set to, I don't know, 40, 50 pixels, etc. should be fine. Well, let's set it to 50. Anyways, next, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start drawing on the right side of myself. And actually, let me press Command Z to undo that. We should make sure we are at the place where we want to start this effect. I wanted to start at four seconds and five frames in, so I'm going to bring it over here. This is where I did an example. Obviously, you can have it start wherever you want. I'm going to draw on the right side of my body, and when I do that, this is what's going to be used as the mask that is going to disperse uh, the particles, right? So as I come down here, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, here, if you used a, some footage that is, uh, that's not keyed out, right, or you've not rotoscoped your, your, your person, your character, whatever you're doing the dispersion to, then keep in mind that this brush uh, going on top of the background means part of the background will be the colors of the particles coming off, right? So that's just something to keep in uh, keep in mind. Does it matter that much? Eh, it, well, it depends. You'll have to play with it. I'll come over here and click on Effect Controls, and I'll click on Paint on Transparent. When I do that, it removes the footage, and now I just have this paint stroke here, which is what I want, right? I'll come over here to the project. I'll drag in the dance footage. Again, now underneath. Now, if I come over here and select the track band of this layer that we just dragged in to alpha mat, what do we see? We see just the edge, that's just what we want. Awesome, right? Next, let's select both these layers, go up to layer and select pre-compose. We're gonna move all the attributes to the new composition and we are going to call this uh, particle or particles with an S, <laughs> we'll say OK. Now that's created a new composition in our main comp of those two other layers, right? So next, we want to add particular. Let's go up to layer, select new, and then select solid. We'll call this particular. Select, uh, make sure it's the comp size, right? Click here, or it's already set there. Say OK. Next, we want to come over here to our effects and presets. It's on the bottom on mine. We'll go ahead and start typing particular. When we do so, we'll see it right here, and I'm going to drag it onto the solid. Now, in the effect controls for this layer, you'll see that we have particular loaded. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want to start changing some settings, right? Because right now, the emitter is coming from a point right here in the center, and that's not what we want. We'll click on the arrow here to twirl down the properties of the emitter. We'll change it from a point emitter to a layer emitter. After we do that, we have to tell it what layer to use. So we'll come down to layer emitter. And we, before we set that, we want to click right here under the particle uh, pre-comp uh, and set it to a 3D layer. 
Next, come over here, set it to particles, boom. Now, starting at four seconds, uh, four seconds and five frames in, it should start to emit particles. And if we come out, we're not seeing particles. What's going on? It's only because we're emitting 100 particles right here. So let's bump this up to 500,000, right? Anything beyond, beyond 500,000, uh, you'll get an uh, well a warning from particular saying, yo, you're emitting too many particles, yo. <laughs> Anyway, next, we don't want the direction to be uniform coming off this whole layer like that. We want it to be shooting to the right. Or you can try uniform, but I think directional will look better, right? Now it's pushing off to the right. We have a velocity setting right here, and right now it's set to 100. Let's bump that up to 120. That's just going to move the particles a little bit over to the right, a little bit more, right? Next, velocity from motion. Let's set that to 40 because we're going to animate this layer also. Now I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to well, actually, let's close the em emitter properties right there and open up the particle properties, right? Let's change the light from 3 seconds is the five seconds and you'll notice i press enter twice so it opened up the layer uh a particular layer there we'll close that out we're in the main comp right now and we've set it to five seconds next we want to change the size maybe to uh, i don't know two instead of five that's going to make them smaller we're also going to change it from a sphere to a cloudlet which will make them a little bit bigger and a little softer, right? So if we come out a little bit more, you'll notice that these particles travel a bit more because of our velocity settings in the emitter here, right? So for example, if we bump this up to 400, it should make them scatter quite a bit more. The other thing that we messed up on or we haven't added is we should put some Y uh, directional value here. If we set this to 90, it's going to push them off to the right, right? Let's change our velocity from 400 back to 120. And now it's coming off something like that. Maybe even drop this down to 100, huh? Or... Yeah, well, let's leave it at 100 for now. Maybe we change it later, right? So uh, let's scroll down here. Let's make one more change, and that's the size over life. We can come over here to the presets. If you can't see it, just go ahead and drag the window pane over and you'll see presets right here. We'll select the second one, which is basically at the beginning of your life, be full size. At the end of your life, scale down to zero, right? We can also adjust this by clicking on this first one here. It'll give us handles and we make some, make some small changes here and this will make them get even smaller over time. Next, I think we've done everything we need to do in particular. So uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want my uh, myself, you know, to be underneath this, right? So let's go ahead and uh, actually go back over to the project pane, find the dance footage, drop it in below. Now you'll see I'm here. I'm doing some crazy dance moves. <laughs> Anyways, watch the other video. You'll see what the reason for this was, right? And you'll see that these are coming off basically this point right here. It starts at four minutes and five seconds. However, it didn't really start there, right? So if we come a bit, they start to be born, right? And so uh, maybe one of the things that we can do is tell them to be born a bit sooner, right? So if we come back to the particle layer, come to effects controls, and we find... I think, let's see, is it under particle? I think it is, right? No, it's under emitter. So in emitter, emitter extra or, or emission extras, we can pre-run this by 10% or something. And that way, particles are already coming uh, at four, minute, uh, four seconds of five frames. Maybe even bump this up to 30. Maybe bump it to, uh, I don't know, 60. It should be, it sh the idea here is that there's some pre-run to the particles, but it doesn't seem to be working, huh? So that's okay. Anyways, we'll come back here over to four seconds uh, and five frames, and let's drop this down. I don't know why the pre-run is not working correctly. Maybe if I bump this to 100, let's just see, right? Yeah, it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's, yeah, I'm not sure. So we'll go ahead and drop this down to zero. No worries. And over here, what we want to do with this green screen footage is we want at four seconds and five frames where the emission starts is we want to have two, uh, two layers of this dance footage. So I'll press command D on my keyboard, control, control D if you're using a PC. And we want to have one of these layers end and start at four seconds and five frames. Because remember, that's where the emission starts. To do that, you press option uh, open bracket to have, uh, or option start bracket to have it start right there. And then we'll select the next one. We'll say option end bracket, which will say this layer stops right here. 
right? So this is just me dancing, right? When it gets to four uh, seconds and five frames, we wanna freeze frame this layer. So I'll select it, I'll right click, I'll go to time and select freeze frame. Now when we do this, you'll notice I am stuck in that position no matter how I pull this, uh, this right? And the reason that that's important is as these particles are being birthed, what I want to do is get myself to disappear, but I also want these particles to move. We didn't animate them. If we wanted to animate them, real quick, I'll explain it. We double click, we select this. You see that right now, this is just a brush stroke, right? In fact, let me go over here to four, uh, four seconds and five frames where this brush stroke is exactly lined up. But right now it's just a brush stroke. If I went over to layer and select auto trace, I could trace that brush stroke and then select the, the masks to be um, add. And after I did that, I could delete the brush strokes and I could animate the mask. However, I think we will get a better result doing this, right? So I'm gonna do a couple things right here. Number one, there's the particles. My computer is taking its time and it's even set to quarter res, right? This is crazy. Anyway, so we're going to come over here and we want to animate uh, here the position of these particles to move, right? But before we do that, let's go ahead and select the layer that has the freeze frame and let's create a mask. I'm going to go ahead and let's do this. Let's just draw. Let's just draw a mask. We'll select this and we'll come up here. And right now we're drawing a shape layer. Amazing. I'm going to press Apple Z to undo. I want to make sure that I'm on the right layer, right? Which is this layer. Now, if I click and drag, we should be creating a mask. Perfect, right? So here we go. The mask is there. And what we want it to do, if we open up the properties right here by pressing M, is we want to animate the mask path, right? So we're going to click on the stopwatch here. We're going to come in maybe five, I don't know, uh, to let's go. So over one second, let's say. And at this point, I'm going to double uh, click. Well, actually, let's double click those edges. And I want to drag this out. Let's make sure we have the selection tool on, right? And I don't want to do that. I just want to select two of these. Maybe if I zoom out, this would be easier. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and select these two points on the mask. And then uh, everything, nothing wants to work today. Huh? It, this is what it is. <laughs> so what I want to do, come on, baby, just select two points of the mask. Huh? This point and press shift that point. And now what I want to do is I want to drag this out, hold shift. And I want it to come to this point. And right now what we did is we revealed that area. So if we select subtract, then what's happening is as we transition this over, right? It should be making me disappear. Uh, with this mask, right? So another thing we want to do is press MM for this to bring up all the mask properties and let's set the feather to 100 pixels, right? Now when you do it, there's a softer edge. So over a second of time, I am now starting to disappear with the uh, transition of this mask. I'm going to click on this arrow here to hide the properties of the mask. We'll select the particle layer. We want to click on P for position and we're going to open up those properties. We're going to click on the stopwatch here and then the same thing. We're going to go to five uh, seconds and five frames and we are going to animate the position over, right? So I don't know exactly where we're going to land. Let's change this back to 100%. And after we do so, this is where we have to play around, right? So I'm going to bring the playhead back. And notice how the screen is taking its time. Of course, I'm screen recording right now, so <laughs> there are some issues. But let me go ahead and scrub through a bit, and let's see if we can line this up as good as we can, right? So as this comes over, boom, maybe my uh, mask is moving faster than this. So maybe uh, that means that we have to speed up the position of the particles, which would mean drag them over to the left more. And if we do that, let's go ahead and press play. It's going to take a second to render. All right, so one of the things you're seeing here as this comes back, let's go ahead and press play with the pre-rendered portion. Maybe that's happening too fast. So let's take it from five seconds and uh, six, uh, five seconds and, uh, and five frames. Wow, it's like a, a limerick, right? Or what is the word? <laughs> Anyways, I'll drag this out to be that length, and then we'll come over here, and we have to set our uh, change the mass duration of the mass shape also to be here. Now let's see what that looks like, right? 
And I'm just going to, instead of letting it play, I'm just going to scrub a little bit, see how it lines up, right? So I'm coming here. That looks like it's okay, maybe. Maybe we need to move the, uh, the, the mass shape a hair, right? So I'll double click on this and uh, maybe move this a bit over, right? And let's go ahead and play that again. So is that looking good? Not exactly, right? So one of the things we can do to cheat this, obviously you can keep playing with this, right? I don't want to spend uh, 20 minutes dialing this in exactly, but instead I'll show you a way you could cheat this. Right here, this is that particle layer, right? So if I go ahead and uh, hide that, you'll see that the particle layer is doing that. In fact, maybe if we turn it off, it would look better. Let's go ahead and come here. It looks a lot better, huh? So by turning that particle layer off, we're not showing the brush stroke, right, of the edge. However, one cheat, if we had it on, is we could just go ahead and uh, set some keyframes for opacity, huh? But I think it looks all right the way it is. So let's go ahead and turn off this layer. I'll press the space bar. One of the things I like to see is that there's more movement in these particles. So I'll come up to the particular layer and we're going to change the velocity from uh, motion. Let's set it to 80%. Let's bump up the velocity to 120 and let's see what those changes look like. And maybe even, uh, pff, let's see, maybe we even bump up the life, right? From five seconds to, no, I don't think that's the issue. Let's take the size to 2.5. How about that? How about that? Anyways, we'll come back here, we'll press play. Okay, so that's looking all right to me. What we want to do now, I'm going to go ahead and press play so you can see that in real time. So maybe what we want to do is come right now at six uh, seconds and uh, five frames is when everything is done. Let's go back to maybe five seconds and 25 frames. And now let's set some uh, opacity keyframes. We'll come over here to the particular layer. We'll press T for opacity. We'll click on the stopwatch to be 100% here. And then we'll come up here to seven seconds, let's say. And at seven seconds, let's drop this down to zero. Boom. So also what's happening down here is if, yeah, I guess this is the mask is showing through. Huh? It's not this one. It would be this one. No. What is showing through this? No. What? How is that even showing there? It doesn't make sense. huh? Maybe if we drop this up to full, it will go away. I don't know why that's showing there. But anyways, well, it seems like it should be this layer, right? Oh, it is this layer. Anyway, so what we can do here. I don't, I guess it's because of the feather. So we could do one of two things, huh? Let's go ahead and zoom out. I mean, one, the smarter fix is to fix this mask. It's too close because remember we have that hundred pixel feather. So if we make sure that we have this, whoops, let's come back. We'll select this. We'll select the mask and we want to select this one. We want to select this one. We want to unselect these. There we go. And now if we go like that, we can then come here and find the beginning of this mask, which is right here. Let's see. There we go. And then let's just make this bigger, right? If we go down like that, and then when we come over here, we want the same thing, right? So when it comes to this keyframe right here, again, with these two selected, we'll click and we'll drag holding shift. And now we have fixed that issue. Come on, baby, computer, catch up. All right, so I just stopped it. I'm sure I'm speeding this up in post. <laughs> I realized I set it to full instead of a quarter for the res. And let's just go ahead and play this. I mean, that's looking sexy. You guys get the, the drift of what's happening here, right? So uh, what I'm going to do next is explain how I did the next part, right? If I come over here to project, I create a new composition and we'll call this reflection. It's not really, or well, maybe we'll call it mirror, right? I guess it really doesn't matter what we call it, but <laughs> anyways, set this to 15 seconds. I'll say okay, and if we bring the main composition in here, we have that composition that we just did, right? Where I basically, I disappear, bah, looking good. Next, if we go ahead and press Command D to duplicate that layer, we can then select this layer, right click, and go to time, 
and say time reverse layer, right? Now, if we take both layers, I'm going to take the first one, take the position properties. I'm going to move this over a bit, right? Because I'm going to take the next one and we're going to find the place. Remember, this starts somewhere here. It goes from four uh, seconds uh, and five frames to six second and five frames. So let's pick the middle, which would be five seconds and five frames of this transition. We'll bring up the uh, position or actually we don't want to bring up the transition position. We want to change where this layer is, right? So what we're trying to do is find, I don't know where, <laughs> where it is, right? Oh, it is the length. My bad, my bad. So this is correct, I guess. It's got to be here. So if this is four seconds in, minus four seconds would be somewhere around there, right? Come on, baby. Let's set you to quarter. I don't know why I keep not having it at quarter. There we go. Are we getting closer? <laughs> All right, there we go. We're almost there, huh? So we're looking for something similar, which I, that's a little bit too far, so a little bit over. So this is looking closer. Whoops, not there. Maybe here is probably, that looks very close, right? It doesn't have to be exact, huh? Next, we'll come over here to this composition. We'll press S for scale. We'll unlink the properties on the first one. We'll type in negative 100, which is gonna flip myself, right? Next, we'll press P for position, and we will bring this over, right? And now, obviously line this up wherever you want, but I'll just do a quick preview right here at quarter res. I'll press space bar. <laughs> All right, I'll stop it right there. You realize that this is a basically particular creating a million particles inside After Effects plus a screen recording. Of course, it's taxing the computer, huh? I'll press spacebar. Obviously, we need to turn the audio off one of these, right? Or make sure that this layer, uh, so we'll turn the audio off on the first one and we'll come here. And of course, probably what we would do is turn the audio off on both, bring it into our NLE, make some changes there. Again, I'll press spacebar. So there you go. Obviously, in the example I showed you, I had the audio reversed on one clip, and you can adjust this more to start at a certain place. Now, if we said right here at four, we don't want the particles right here, right? These particles should be coming from this layer. So we either adjust this layer by moving it over, or we could do an opacity keyframes to make sure that they start blending in now because we want the, uh, from one person to turn into the other, huh? You guys get the deal now. I hope you like this tutorial. You found it informative and useful. If you did, leave a thumbs up, a like, a share, a comment. Share with your friends, guys. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm out.